Okay, in this video you will learn how to make a 12 volt inverter going from 12 volts to 120 volts AC using an old microwave oven transformer. Now you're going to want to look for a very large microwave oven transformer, high wattage. And what you're going to do, you're going to want to refer to my other video on how to rewind the transformer. You can go to my video list and you can refer to that highly detailed video on how to remove the old 2000 volt secondary and wind in a new secondary. Now in this case I use 10 gauge stranded wire. You can also use 12 if you would like and that would not be any problem. The most important thing is you want to wind 11 turns or 12 and make sure they're wound nice and tight and neat like you see here. It makes a big difference for efficiency and a nice even wind. Go to this side. So once you wind the 12 turns, you're going to add a center tap. Now the way I did it is once I wound the 12 turns, I cut a three quarter of an inch section away of the insulation. And then I got another t uh, 10 gauge wire, stripped the end of it, and placed it right next to the stripped area on the, wind, the wire that I'm winding and I soldered the two together and then I slid heat shrink tubing over it and that was my center tap coming off. Now you can come out with the wire and you could pigtail it and go back in. There's no problem with that either. It's much neater as you can see here when it's soldered directly into the winding itself rather than coming out with a pigtail. So once you wind the first 12 you're going to continue on and wind the next 12 turns this is the start of the wind and this one here is the end and the one here is the tap that I put in alright so here's the schematic and it's very simple you have your transformer with 120 volts AC which is going to be outputted on this coil these terminals right here that's your 120 volts going out this is where the 120 volts used to go into your microwave oven to power the 2000 volt secondary so now you're doing it in reverse. You're going to feed in alternating current or actually DC pulses into this winding and it'll transform into 120 volts out of this winding right here. So there's your 120 volt coil. This is your 24 turns with the center tap. Now the center tap connects to 12 volt battery and you could put a fuse in line with the feed. 10 would probably work, but I would say put a 15 amp, that's fine. Now one end of the winding feeds to the transistor on the left, and if you continue from the right side, you go through a 62 ohm 20 watt resistor. Now I had to make mine out of about 16 1 K ohm 1 watt resistors, so I have roughly 16 watts and 62.5 ohms and this still gets hot under use. Transformers run warm, coolish to warm, but these will get hot so that's why I recommend going to a 20 watt rather than my 16 that I'm using. You get a 25 that's even better. So once the lead from the right side of the winding goes to the collector of the left transistor you're going to carry on through the resistor that I made heading into the base of the opposite transistor. This transistor's collector connects to the beginning of the winding. So one side goes to this collector of this transistor and this transistor's collector goes to the opposite side. And then you can see after where it ties into the left side you'll have the other 62 ohm resistor feeding into the base of this transistor and both emitters go to the negative on your battery. And it's as simple as that. I've tried other ones. Now, I've tried other ones online, Aaron Cake, and on that particular one, there's a resistor here going into a protective diode like a 1N4001 and another one on this side, and they join together in the middle, and these resistors feed the power from the center tap, which is right there, and I didn't have too much success with it. It does work but it does not work as well as this. This one seems to work extremely well. 
you will get 60 to 75 watts out of this inverter but you will be getting it in 140 to 170 hertz now yours may vary a little lower or a little higher but you could still use that power for powering lights and a lot of electronics because a lot of electronics have a built-in rectifier so it's not going to make a difference the frequency because it's going to be converted to DC anyway now for my current setup I don't need a really large heat sink these will do just fine thermal compound between the transistor and, and the heat sink and you're good to go this capacitor is roughly 12 microfarads and I got this out of a ceiling fan and I had this one laying around now I'm going to show you why I want to use this later when I demonstrate okay everything is connected I have the output terminals feeding the DMM and it's right now set for AC volts we're going to be powering first a 40 watt incandescent bulb Okay, so you see the whole and then I'm going to show you on the 75 what I'm going to do with that capacitor in a little bit. So it's all ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to take this clamp and touch it to the positive of the post. And there you go. You can hear a little bit of a buzz. Got some rain going on right now, unfortunately. And there's our voltage. 126, and that's 40 watts. Okay, now let's take a look at what the frequency is when the light comes on, the 40 watt lamp. Alright. Now you can hear, you can actually hear the oscillations from the transistors. You can hear the oscillations. And 174 hertz. Now I'm going to demonstrate using a 60 watt and the last one will be the 75. Now how it works is very simple. In order to transform from one voltage to another, you need alternating current or pulsed DC. And these two transistors do just that. They create DC pulses which allow the current to be transformed. Now we're going to try a 60 watt and I will show what the output voltage is during the 60 watt. Now I'm going to connect the clamp to the battery again at 60 and you can see our voltage is at 125 which is very good the two transistors only get warm but the resistors will get hot that's why I requested to use a higher wattage resistor for those 62 ohms now this it is a little higher, it's around 200 cycles per second, 200 hertz. That's what the 60 watt. Now I notice there's a relationship between the frequency and the wattage of the bulb. The 40 watt bulb causes the frequency to be around 170, 175 hertz. The 60 watt bulb results in around 210 to 205 hertz. Now if I go to the 75, it'll probably be a little higher. Right now I have a 75 watt bulb and I'm going to put this to the voltage to show you. 75 is about the limit for this. That's 75 and you see we're putting out around 98 volts, 97. Now I'm going to show you something very interesting. So now the voltage is around 97 volts, 98 using the 75 watt. Now when I had my induction generator, to get the induction generator to power small motors, I used a capacitor in series with the output lead from the capacitor bank. And this actually has an effect of lowering the frequency, as you will see. And it also causes a power increase to occur. The 97 volts that you saw a minute ago will become around 120 once I connect this and the bulb will have full power. Now to do that I'm going to connect this 12 microfarad capacitor to one leg 
like that, of the transformer. The other leg is going to go onto that side and onto the terminal back. So now what we did, we're going to have one leg of the 120 volts is going to flow through 12 microfarads and then to the load, which is the 75 watt lamp. It'll come on much brighter at full brightness and the voltage will be right where it should be, around 120. Here I'm going to connect the clamp to the 75. Now it's really, really bright, and look at our voltage. Isn't that interesting? Just by adding one capacitor in series allows the 75 watt to be run with no problem at all. Now let's take a look at our frequency. And the frequency is around 230. 229, like, which is what I said earlier, is that the higher the wattage, the frequency goes up. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the 75, and I'm going to leave the capacitor in place. And you're going to see by leaving that capacitor in place with a lower wattage bulb, that the frequency will drop from the 175, 180, down to around 140. Okay, the 40 watt bulb was in place. The capacitor is still in place. We're going to turn it on and see how the capacitor reduces the frequency while keeping the voltage the same. Now, originally it was 175 to 180. Let's see what it is now. All right, so as you can see, it dropped it down to 155. And our voltage is... 127 like before. Frequency around 154. So it has the effect of lowering the frequency by adding the capacitor on a lighter load. Now I did try putting capacitors across the output of the 12 of the 120 volts, but all that did was increase the frequency. And I also tried playing with capacitor values on this side between the base and the collector and between the base and the emitter. I tried everything. And it had very little, if any, effect. But like I said, this will work for powering uh, lights and a lot of electronics because a lot of electronics go through a rectifier. So it's not going to be a big deal. Now, the other one that was online, I think it was Aaron Cake on his website, he had the one with the two resistors and the two diodes connecting to the center tap. And people were complaining about their capacitors exploding, and one of mine exploded. The easy solution to stop the capacitors from exploding, you're going to want to use an electrolytic aluminum that's rated 200 volts or higher, and you will not have that problem. But even after correcting that, the circuit still did not perform anything like this one. This one performs extremely well.